Well, good morning, slappers, my dear slappers. Coming to you today from, insert name of your town here. Just uh, wanted to uh, check in with you really quickly. We're delighted you're here. Thank you for listening and watching was our, on our weekly podcast with blackguards. Um, does anybody have a number? Does anybody know what number this is? What slapper number this is? This, my friends, is Slappercast episode 296. Ah, I'm going to say 296 or 297. It's up there. It's up there. And the, the reason why I'm sweating, ladies and gentlemen, is because I've been holding my breath, sucking in for like 30 seconds. And uh, whew, <laughs> that's not for everybody. I asked the lads today, I said, hey, uh, what's your, uh, give me a, uh, give me something that you are, that you'd like to change about yourself. Mine is negativity. Well, I'm, 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 uh, I'm pretty good at that. So, uh, uh, that's the one thing I changed. And I also asked him another question that's been eating at me for a while now, wondering if, um, if and what sport you could compete in, we could compete in individually in the Olympics, given a year to train. And I've been, because it's been bothering me for a while. What, what could I do even now at this ripe old age of 91? Um, what could, look at the Karate Kid down there. Are you relaxing off right now? Oh, I better turn that off for the kids. Um, uh, Olympic sport. I could, and, and you know, I, I keep coming back to the same thing. Anything with endurance, because it's not that I'm fit. I'm stubborn, really stubborn, excruciatingly stubborn. So, uh, uh, yeah, anything that's anything, it's endurance. You know, so over the course of three, I'll just outlast you just to just to be awful. So that's my uh, that's my Olympic sport that I've been good at. The other thing is, uh, I want to uh, I want to uh, just thank the wonderful Mary for uh, for suggesting this godforsaken hellhole. And uh, as you can see, water's all right. I shouldn't even be in here. What am I doing in here? Anyway, I'm doing in here because I want to make sure that I, I, I keep the the lads asked me to keep the video under three minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. We, uh, we have a wonderful fun at Lucky 19 Brewery in Huntsville, Texas. Next week, we're celebrating our friend Spud. He's from Ireland, and he owns a place called Finn McCool's. And uh, his lovely partner, Lisa, has asked us to come in. He doesn't, he doesn't, he hates us. He doesn't want us there. But um, we're going to celebrate Spud's, celebrate Spud's 50th at Finn McCool's. And it's, uh, it's in sunny old Houston, Texas. Love to have you there. Then we're doing an all-day uh, uh, event at uh, in Cyprus. It, it's at a church, so I can't really say the name without bursting into flames and sucking it at the same time. But it's going to be uh, this coming Sunday, and uh, it's going to be it's going to be uh, like I said, an all-day event, four to nine. Uh, it's going to be their Halloween celebration, so bring the kids, pumpkin patches. Um, we're going to be doing all our pumpkin-themed songs, um, as well as uh, well. That's probably about it, right? That's that's enough to put anybody off. Yeah, I, I'm, you know, truly thrilled to have you along here in Slappercast episode, insert number here. Yeah, 296 or 297, Slappercast weekly broadcast, weekly, weekly chat show with blackguards, your hosts. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to be about it. We are going to, uh, we're going to be uh, joined by some very special guests this coming weekend. So uh, yeah, strap in, strap on and uh, let, let's go. Or is it slap in, slap on? All right. I am heading home from Huntsville, where we just played our second show ever at Lucky 19 Brewery. It's a little a small brewery. Wow, was that a dead cow? What the fuck was that? Or probably a deer. Check, check the tapes when I get home. Um, <laughs> at Lucky 19 Brewery, Huntsville, Texas. Terrific brewery, a little brewery up here in Huntsville. They've got a beer garden that we played at twice now. and. Next time we go, I really recommend you guys come. It's, it's, it's really nice out there, especially this time of year. The first time we played there, it was in August, and it was like brutally fucking hot. And uh, that, was, that, was, uh, that was hard work. Tonight was a breeze. Uh, I mean, figuratively and literally, it was just really nice weather out there. Uh, the sun was, you know, it was, it was like 90 degrees when we got there, but it didn't last very long. Got down to the 80s pretty quickly, and the breeze made it feel even nicer. So, really great, really great place, really great beer. They've got, they've got their own homemade root beer on tap. So yeah, you guys need to check this place out. And I'm not, I'm just like a just regular root beer, not like hard root beer. 
That's what Patrick had had one of those before he left. Anyway, we only have this one show this weekend because Patrick is leaving on a trip tomorrow. He's taking a 4 a.m. flight out of town. So he gave us some questions to answer for the show. Uh, number one was, I think, what's the biggest drawback of being in a band? The first thing that comes to mind is that there have been many times in, in, over the 20 years of doing this that I haven't been able to go see a show, whether it's a, a local band that I really like or a touring band that I don't get to see very often, if at all. And I haven't been able to go because we've been busy playing shows. And that's a, a good problem to have. Most people don't have. But however, yeah, I mean, that is a drawback. There are a lot of, a lot of shows I missed out on because I was working. The other side of that is even when I do have time off on a, on a, on a, you know, a rare Friday or Saturday or even if it's another, another day during the week where there's somebody playing, I'm so freaking wiped out from the shows I did play that I really don't want to be out in another, another noisy, smoky bar, depending on where it is. I guess they're not really, most of them aren't smoky anymore, but you know what I mean? That, that's often been hell I feel like, oh God, I just need a night off. I don't want to go out to another bar and abuse my ears again. So it, it, is, it is a drawback. I mean, when I was, when I was uh, bandless, I used to go see live music all the time. And part of that was the hunger I had to create music and to be in a band live band. And it's always what I wanted to do. So now that I'm doing that, uh, that, that, that in a sense that, that itch gets scratched, you know? But every time I have gone out to see other bands and other musicians, it, it always is good. And I need to make time for that more and not use my exhaustion as an excuse. And that kind of leads me to the next question Patrick asks us, which is what's, what's one thing you would change about yourself? And that's an easy one for me. It's procrastination. Because that, I mean, that's that's a small example. It's like, yeah, I don't, I'm too exhausted. I'm not going to do this right now. I'll do it, you know, the next time I have an opportunity to do something like this. And quite frequently, as anybody who's wrestled with procrastination, which is, I guess, almost everybody on the face of the planet, knows that it, that turns into a cascading problem. And pretty soon, it just never gets done, whatever it is that you're putting off. That is my biggest illness as a human being. There's no question from, from the smallest little things like house cleaning or, you know, whatever small things at home that I'm not doing when I should be doing them to big things like starting a family or, or, you know, putting out my first solo record and things like that. I just keep thinking, ah, later. But when you get to be 55, <laughs> that, that that uh, flaw in my personality is really starting to uh, lose its its charm if it ever had any charm at all I'm just like okay I really need to fix this I was trying to think because that is something obviously I can fix that, that's a behavioral problem I don't know I was trying to think if there's something I can change about myself that I can't actually change you know if, if I had a magic wand to change about myself is there anything I would do I, don't, I honestly don't know. Some of it is just fanciful stuff, like, yeah, I would like to live longer. You know, not dying would be nice. That'd be cool. And no, it's not have a full head of hair. <laughs> I really don't give a shit about that anymore. I guess, I, I, well, okay. I, I know I, I can already sing, and I can sing. I'm a decent singer. If I could change myself in one way that I can't change, it would be... Any, I want to have the singing voice, <laughs> the singing, the vocal range of Harry Nelson. That's what I want. Back when he was a healthy, young motherfucker, the most amazing voice in the world. That's what I want. I want, I want to have Harry Nelson's range. He was in his prime. I wish I could sing like that. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go and listen to his cover of uh, um, Without You. I Can't Live if Living is Living Without You. That song. He does an amazing cover of that. And what was the other question? Um, oh yeah, what what's an Olympic sport that you could reasonably compete in? I think if if you had a year to train, and really the only thing because I don't really know that much about sports, let alone the Olympics. I don't think I would ever be good at anything like skiing. 
or anything that requires like some kind of you know a lot of mechanical skill to operate a uh, like slalom or, or you know, basketball forget it I think what I, I could recently do it I'd probably suck at it even with a year's training especially at my age I don't know if I could even do it even if I did do it with years of solid rigorous training but running uh, running is really the only sport I can see myself doing because I, I used to I, I used to have pretty powerful legs and I, could, I used to be a pretty, pretty good sprinter I never competed but I could run pretty fucking fast um, but I, I know that yeah I mean I would have to do training I think if I tried to do it now I would injure myself yeah that I would like to because I actually do like running I, the only reason I used to run Patrick runs all the time just for exercise like your know, jogs jogging I did used to run for exercise a lot when I was younger but I'm not so fond of the potential like I was saying I, I, I'm not so fond of the potential of injuring myself alright kids you know what I forgot on here this beautiful slapper day what I forgot to tell you was there is uh, I also asked the lads about what would be uh, your number one drawback from being in a band I think it's just the environment I think it's you know once you get into this everything gets real spinny and you know you kind of get you know weird views and uh, you know you start to you start to become a different person your eyes get real swollen it's a mix between um, allergies cocaine meth and uh, Viagra um, Allegra uh, anyway so I, I would say the number one uh, drawback being in a band is being uh, just not being able to play and every time you stop. I want to I want to play a show every single place we stop. So uh, all you engineers out there, I want a, a very, very small but powerful PA that we can set up in one to two minutes and begin playing, okay? So number one drawback, you can't play every time you stop and I want to fix that. Cheers. Hey, hey everyone, Turbo here. I got some questions that were tossed my way. First question is, what are the biggest drawbacks of being in a band? Ugh. Well, I love being in a band. Uh, I've been in them my whole life, most of my life anyway. I'm gonna say something that's probably a little different. I'm gonna say the biggest drawback of being in a band is when one outside influence gets its way in and can destroy a band. Um, I've seen this happen, I've been a part of this, and uh, it can be difficult. So I'm gonna name drop here. I used to, uh, used to play in a band called Pummel, and we got the pleasure of working with some great people, and one of them was Richard Dashett. He was a former uh, producer for Fleetwood Mac, and uh, we were uh, down in California, down in the L.A. area, and Clown Studios down there. I don't even know if that place is still open, but it was a cool, cool rehearsal place. And uh, he pulled me aside one time, and he was like, Kevin, come here. And I was like, uh oh, I'm in trouble. And I probably was 20. You know, I was a kid. And uh, she, he's like, you got to keep the band together. I was like, okay. I'm all, is the band breaking up? And he's like, that's going to be your biggest challenge. He's like, don't let something from the outside come in and blow it up. And uh, he's like, not a girlfriend, boyfriend, nothing. Don't let it sneak in and take it over. And uh, I thought that was an interesting story. I've thought about that story a few times. I may have even shared it, but when I was asked that question, uh, that's the first thing that came to my mind. So that's what I'm going to say is my biggest drawback. Question number two, <sighs> what is one thing you would change about yourself? What's happening here? It's like, hold on, let me lay down on the couch for this one. I'm going to dig deep here. I'm glad boss man's not sitting next to me because he'd be making fun of me right now. Uh, I'm going to say letting go earlier. Because I typically will let go, but there's a few things I don't. But letting go earlier, you know, I, I've i always said all the time about limitless, limitless chances. Why do we give people limitless chances, especially family? I don't understand this. It's like they should be acting the best to you. So I'm going to say letting go, letting things go and – uh I'm trying not to get too deep on that, but that's going to be the thing I change by myself. Let things go earlier. Question number three. One, two, three. One, two. I laughed when I read this one. It said, what Olympic sport would you do after one year of training? Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I Googled what is the easiest Olympic sport 
because <laughs> I was like, there's no way I'm doing a lot of these things. And I thought about, you know, I could do boxing. I just one hit and I'd go down, but you know, how long could I last? I don't know, but uh, I think I got it. I think I'm going to do that downhill bobsled thing, you know, and this is where boss man would totally make fun of me. You just, I know the guy in the front's driving, I guess he's steering and the guy in the back's the anchor pushing, but I feel like I could be one of the dudes just in the bobsled. It's just down we go. You know? So that's going to be my comical Olympic sport. I'm not even sure why that's a sport. I, I think it's, I don't get it, but it, it maybe it's just not my thing. I don't know. I'm going to say that or what else could we do? I thought about saying golf, but that's only because I love playing golf. I just, I don't know if I'd be able to do it as an Olympic sport. You know, I wouldn't be good, but golf would be something I would choose. But I think the one I could actually do is the bobsled guy. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be on the team. Yeah. We were playing at Finn McCool's this, this weekend. Our friend Neil McRory, Spud, as we call him. Spud, we've known for years. He and his wife Lisa, we've also known for years. In fact, Neil, Neil and Lisa, they go all the way back to the inception of the band. Because Neil and, and Lisa used to bartend. I think Neil, maybe I wonder if I'm getting this wrong. I know Lisa used to bartend at the Beverly Pub, uh, which is where Blackers was born, essentially. That's where I first met Patrick, where we first started playing together. Spud, I want to say that Spud bartended there too, but I'm not sure if that's correct. We we mainly know Spud from bartending at the Ashford Pub, both locations. Um, but now he owns his own pub with Lisa, so you should come. Please come. It's gonna be great. All right, later. See you next week. This is Slappercast. We are delighted to have you, and uh, seriously, thanks for listening. And we hope to see you all soon. I should be sweating um, a little less by the time you see us next. Cheers. <laughs>